As a wedding photographer, every now and then I come across situations where you've gone out for an engagement shoot or a bridal party shoot or something like that, and the light is just real flat and gray. And today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I would edit these moody photos, as some people like to call it, but just how I handle the situation and uh, you know the important factors when delivering a set like this. One of the main things with editing a set in general uh, is consistency and you really need to have consistency amongst your entire set. You don't want to be jumping around different presets or different color looks. Uh, you want to deliver your entire set with really consistent editing. So one thing I do is I really only stick to like one or two presets that I use just in general over the entire board. Uh, but I will commit to a preset or a style of editing that I'm going to use before I start editing because I want to stick to that through the entire set, whether it's a wedding or an engagement shoot. So with that being said, let's jump into Lightroom and start having a look at some of these images. So you can see here in the top corner that you can see all the settings and the lens I was using. Most of the images are going to be around f1.2 because uh, this was, I think, the first or second time that I'd used the Sigma 35 1.2 and I was just really trying it out and putting it through its paces. I did stop down for a couple of shots, but uh, nevertheless, you can see in the corner here the settings I was using and I was using the Sony a7R 4 at the time for the shoot. So the very first thing I'm going to do when we jump in is just hit the R key and straighten out images because that one was way on the piss. Uh, a lot of times I'm just, you know, I'll turn around and see something and I'll just quickly lift up my camera and fire the trigger away, you know, using eye focus or real-time tracking or whatever. Uh, so sometimes I'll have images on angles, but I do really try to get them as straight as possible in camera because that is what slows me down most in the editing process. So now we've got it straight, I'm going to go ahead and decide on the preset we're going to use. In this situation, usually what I use is the muted split one. Uh, I don't really use this preset for anything else other than moody photos because of the way it's made. Um, you know, you have to kind of... Uh, play with the white balance a little bit to get it right, but it's kind of a dreamy, soft, uh, mysterious kind of feel to the images, uh, which really suits that kind of, um, you know, dark lighting situation. So once we've set that on there, I'm just going to go ahead and change the tint a little bit and the white balance and just kind of have a look around, um, zoom in and have a look at skin tones. It does have grain added, obviously, if I take that off. You can see how it looks, and uh, yeah, it's a super, super sharp lens at 1.2, that 35mm. I did just finish my uh, review on the 35mm G Master. You can check that out for yourself as well. But yeah, honestly, I do really like how this one is looking. Um, if we go ahead and try a few other ones as well. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and stick with muted split. I really like that kind of dreamy look. And we'll just change the tint a little bit. White balance is really important to get right also. I'll quite often sync everything as we go through. Uh, but yeah, we want a little bit of a warmer look for this. Uh, again, it's all subjective. It really depends on your style and what you want to do. But like I said, consistency is the key here. Uh, you'll see towards the end when we got a little bit more contrasty light, we could have switched preset, but it's going to change the entire look of the set. So uh, let's leave that one like that. And the next one is pretty similar uh, in terms of where we were. You know, the couple were just over in the corner here with that last photo. So uh, let's copy the settings from that one and move along, press Control V or Command V. My computer runs a little bit slow when I'm recording the screen as well, so there's a little bit of a delay, unfortunately. Crooked, crooked, crooked. Again, we can try out the universal one is usually what I use, but it's gonna be a lot more pink, so <coughs> we'll need to reset that. See, even that doesn't look too bad. Um,
Maybe we'll try that on this one as well. Maybe let's stick with this one. It's funny, I'm changing my mind real time so you guys can see that as well. Yeah, let's roll with that and see how we go. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't say my style overall is kind of dark and moody. It's not really what I do a lot of, but I'm not really gonna go ahead and try and make it look all bright and airy if it's not the situation, because it's just, it just doesn't look right in my opinion. Maybe we'll just crop those people out in the corner there. Yeah, see, now I'm kind of undecided because I do like both of them, but um, let's stick with our choice and commit to our decision, I guess. You would have seen some of these images in the 35mm 1.2 review also. And one thing you'll notice is I am underexposing a fair bit because I want to retain all of that sky detail and not have anything blowing out. Um, I definitely could have gone a little bit brighter and not worried about it, but usually I'll be shooting about no, no more than one stop under, depending on the situation of course, but really all I'm trying to do in terms of exposure is just retain all the highlights. I don't want any clipping at all uh, you know, in the final product. Um, usually also I would, once I've chosen the preset, I'd go ahead and just sync it across all of them. I wouldn't be doing this one by one like I am now, but I'm really just doing that for you guys so you can see the difference in the process. Uh, this Sigma does vignette quite heavily as well, uh, but you can actually go in, I think I've already done it for this one, uh, yeah, so I've made reset the default profile. So, you know, straight out of the box, if you correct it, it's going to look like that. Uh, but I don't like to bring the vignetting all the way back. And in most situations, it's not really needed because it's not this dark. Um, but you can go ahead and just kind of change it to how you like it. Click up here and then go save new lens defaults. So what that's going to do is when you apply that lens correction for any photo, uh, with this lens, it's going to remember those settings uh, if that's what you want to stick to. Uh, but yeah, totally up to your personal preference. Uh, this one I added in here because we're going to use a radial filter as well. Man, this computer's slow with uh, the screen recording going. You can see auto white balance kind of freaking out a little bit as well here. So what I'm going to do here is kind of bring it all up to even how I would use it and then I'll darken it back up and make the most of this sunlight here with the little bird uh, and use the uh, radial filter tool to just bring it up. So first we'll just make a kind of beam here, rotate it around and uh, do something like that. just to kind of accentuate that in that saturation down. Make sure it's all reset. And then I have feather at 100 and invert clicked on as well. So what I'll do is kind of adjust that to how I want it. And then I'll bring the whole exposure down to kind of make up for that difference. Um, and yeah, I really like that. That's, that's my jam. Uh, another thing you could do with this corner over here, it's quite dark because we brought it back down. Use the radial filter tool again and just bring the shadows up like that and adjust to taste. Um, so, you know, if we go ahead and turn both of those off, you can see the difference. It's just making the image a little bit more dynamic. Um, I wouldn't usually do stuff like this, but this is just kind of a prime example for where you, where you could do something like that. So yeah, radial filter tool winner. 
that looks pretty straight to me as well. I think in the final product I made this one 16 by 9 as well, which is something I do reasonably often. And I'll just press Command, Comma, and that'll create a virtual copy so you can see the difference. And then we'll go 16 by 9 and just kind of set it to how you want there. And I'll just make it so this little bit of sand isn't in the photo. There you go. It's kind of like a really cinematic look. Maybe we'll use this one for the thumbnail. <laughs> But uh, yeah, regular 16 by 9. Either way, I could go with those, but yeah. So the next shot here again, you know, there's really no light or color or anything in here, um, but it is a really cool scene. So let's fix that white balance, straighten it out. So it's really quite flat here. Um, if we go before and after, you can see even before it's just kind of blue and gray. Um, so you could add a little bit of saturation back in. Uh, you don't want to go too over the top, but just bringing some, you know, color back into the ocean there. Maybe we'll fix some more of that chromatic, uh, sorry, the uh, vignetting as well, like that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You can use the um, gradual filter tool and then if you use range mask with luminance and you can just kind of adjust it so that uh, it's only going to adjust the uh, brightest parts of the images. So you bring that up about there and you can see with the uh, mask on, it's not taking as much of the uh, cliff there. So it still affects it, but not quite as much. So you see even 1.2 this lens is pretty good bang on focus with them and then the next one is basically exactly the same but i shot it at f 2.5 uh, just because it was quite a wide scene and you know i wanted to kind of get another one where you know it was a little bit sharper all around the frame so we'll command c and copy and paste those settings onto there bring the exposure down a touch because we don't have all that vignetting you can kind of do the same thing uh, if we don't use the luminance mask. Um, just click off and we'll reset that. So you can bring the exposure down and then just bring the shadows back up and that's gonna kind of do the same thing. Uh, but it depends on the situation. So try them out. It's important to learn all these tools as well. sure I'm not cropping out the top of that mountain up there. See sometimes I'll bring the shadows back down and the highlights back up because uh, I want them to pop out rather than bring all this detail up in the, uh, in the rocks. And then the last one here, we click universal. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, so if we go back to the muted split. But again, it is a, a bit of a different look. So you've got to kind of commit to what you're doing uh, at the start of your editing process. That one's not too bad either. The uh, soft preset, the, the CTM1, brings out the greens a lot more. Um, so that's something to remember there. But I do find the universal one works with basically any situation in general, uh, where the other one still works with most situations because CTM1 was the preset I was using uh, maybe a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, my, my pretty much my main preset. Uh, but yeah, Universal was now usually what I use for just about everything. So that's pretty much it guys. Like I said, it's really just about consistency rather than, um, you know, choosing a preset for every kind of photo. You want to make sure that when you go to your gallery view, uh, that everything is looking pretty similar. You don't want to have any photos that kind of really stand out. Um, you, you really want to have that same kind of feel across the board. 
Uh, if you have some presets that are really vibrant and really punchy and some that are really muted or you know a more of a brownie look it's going to really stand out when you're looking at someone's website and couples will notice stuff like that when they're looking for wedding photographers uh, so if we go to my website for example um, like this one you'll see that all the images are really consistent uh, even though these are mixed with Sony and Canon files uh, because my second shooter was on uh, Canon but when you go to the ceremony you really can't tell the difference between the Sony and the Canon whereas if we go to this one uh, this was a Queenstown wedding and I remember I was using the uh, muted split one because the light was just really different down there and it was autumn and it worked really well so you can see there's a difference between these photos and the set I just showed you uh, but the, th the trick is they're consistent they all have the same kind of editing style they're all that really soft muted look and they really take advantage of the lighting situation that I had down there so that's pretty much it guys I hope that helps you out if you have any other questions or requests for videos uh, let me know in the comments and we'll pick those up as well I'll see you in the next one in a couple of days